Hey guys, welcome to Rough Riders. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you've been uh, following my channel, you know on Black Friday I picked up a uh, new Rugged Radio intercom system for my side-by-side. -side. And so I'm getting ready to do the install on that. And before I do the install, I want to make a wiring harness uh, to make the install go a little bit easier when I add a radio in the near future. So I figured I'd shoot a quick video on that and uh, walk you through the process of uh, making a, a wire harness. So uh, let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's pretty much everything you're going to need to make a, a good wiring harness. You're going to need your uh, cabling. Um, I'm using uh, 12 gauge uh, wiring. I'm actually using uh, really insulated wire that's uh, you know protected, so it should be uh, uh, protected from the uh, weather and elements and water and all that other stuff. I've got some sleeving uh, for it as well, uh, flexible fle sleeving. I've got my fuse holders. Uh, as, as well as my fuses. I've got a 30 amp relay. I've got my rocker switch and a handful of connectors and some heat shrink tubing and stuff like that. So that's pretty much everything we need. Let me show you the way the circuit is going to be laid out so that way you can kind of get a sense of uh, how all of this stuff comes together and uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so the way this uh, circuit is laid out uh, for the wiring harness is you have your battery Okay, then, you know, uh, just for uh, simplicity, I'm going to actually connect the wires here on the bottom. I'm going to say that's my negative terminal, and here's my positive terminal. I've got my rocker switch, and this is a lighted rocker switch. Okay, so I've got my positive and my negative. I've got my accessory line here. Then I've got I don't have it now, but I'm going to add a radio at some point. And then I've got my intercom. Okay. And then tying all this together, I've got a relay. Okay. And a relay has five terminals on it. The fifth terminal in the center, we're not going to actually use. That's going to be a no connect. Okay. So um, the way the purpose of using a relay is you can use a small current, for example, something com coming from the accessory line um, to the relay to activate it to turn on the main power. So the way that would work then is you'd wire your main power from the battery, and uh, this is going to be pin 30A, on your positive side. I'm going to take my accessory line and come in here and this is pin I believe 86 and this is pin 85 and then this is pin 87 and so I'm going to take my negative line coming around and coming out to, to ground the relay then I'm going to take the positive negative And that's going to be positive, negative. So we're going to go jump that and tie these together here. And then these will tie together here. And these come in like this. Then you've got your positive line from the rocker switch that comes in here. The negative line comes in and ties in there. Now, as I said, I've got fuses and stuff as well, so I'm going to put fuses in line. And these are going to be my 15 amp fuses. And then I'm going to put a fuse in line on the uh, switch as well. And that's going to be my 4 amp. This has a fuse over here already on it. That's a 2 amp. And that's already in place. That's supplied by Rugged. I don't know what size fuse are running here, but I'm guessing they're probably running a 15 amp fuse here uh, for the radio. So, you know, that's your basic circuit diagram. And the way this is going to work, when you flip on the rocker, 
it's going to uh, activate the relay and then run power from the battery through to the radio and the intercom. So, and then when you flip it off, it uh, it shuts everything off. So that's generally the way everything's going to be wired up. And uh, we're going to do a bench build right now and just verify that all of this stuff works as exactly as it should. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to test that out. So let's uh, let's do a, a quick wiring up and see if if this all works. Okay, so I've started prepping my connectors. I put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on the end of the uh, connectors and I've used colored coated tubing to match the uh, positive and negative wires that I'm going to be doing. I'm now uh, stripping some of my wires here uh, and getting those ready and this will be for the switch. So we're just trimming off the ends. Okay, so for the first step, what I've done is uh, I've wired up my switch harness. So I've got my positive and negative there. I color coded it with shrink wrap. On the other end, I've put a terminal connector for the battery and um, then put a fuse on the end of it as well. So this is connected with a butt connector there. And then I've got a four amp fuse in here. So right now, I've, here's my positive terminal. Here's my negative terminal on the battery side. And here's my positive and negative on the switch side. That'll get me the on-off functionality of the switch. And so here's my rocker switch. So I've got my ground up here, my positive terminal here, and then this is going to go to the accessory. So this is what's going to go out to the relay. So we can verify that everything's working by plugging in the switch. Okay, so now my switch is wired up. So everything's set. So if I flip this on, light comes on, flip it off, light goes off. And so I can confirm that this is my output by putting my multimeter up. And if I come onto this terminal and to ground, let me set this up actually so you can see it. Okay, so if I go on to the accessory terminal and flip it on, I should see 12 volts hit this point. If I can do all this with one hand, there we go. And there's my 12 volts. Okay, so now I'm working on the wire that's going to run from the relay all the way to the battery. And so I have put my fused ends on my positive and negative terminals. These are going to be 15 amp fuses, and I've stripped the wires and soldered them together. I was going to use butt connectors, but um, I just didn't feel like they were going to hold very well, so uh, I went ahead and just soldered the wires together and then used heat shrink, heat shrink tubing on there to, um, to insulate them. So, um, so we've got that portion done. Now I'm going to do the other end uh, that's going to connect to the relay, and I'll solder those to the relay leads uh, as well, so that will be all one piece. Got my relay wired up, so I've got... Uh, the blue is going out to the radio. Uh, this is what's going to drive the power to the radio. And then they're both grounded into the relay. I've got power from the battery coming into the relay right here. And then this one here is going to go to my switch. So we can do a quick test. I can wire this up to the to the switch. I've got everything wired up. I've got my uh, switch going to the relay. I've got my power and ground going to my relay. This end right here is what goes to the radio. Power, power and ground. So if everything's working as it should, I should see 12 volts when I flip the switch on, on the voltmeter. So let's see. There we go, 12.4 volts. So. One thing I um, wanted to do when I was building this harness is I wanted to do some upgrades as I was talking about. And so as part of the upgrades on the wiring harness, I chose uh, actually marine grade cable. So this is cable used for wiring in boats. 
uh, which means that it's uh, protected against oil and water and all that other stuff with the multiple jackets. Each wire uh, it, strand in the uh, copper cable is uh, individually tinned to prevent uh, corrosion and things like that. It's rated up to 600 uh, volts um, of power and it's capable of, of uh, supporting 105 degrees C dry and 75 degrees C wet. Um, so this thing can get, you know, take lots and lots of abuse, which I felt like it was going to be the perfect choice for uh, the application here because um, it's running in the tunnel uh, where, you know, you're going to get a lot of, of mud and muck and junk just thrown up into that area. Um, and so I felt like this was going to be a, a little better than just standard uh, electrical wiring. So that's why I chose this, this cabling. Okay, so now I'm working on the radio and intercom wires that are going to connect to both the power and ground coming off the relay. So uh, I've already grouped my uh, power wires together and my ground wires together, uh, put them in the sleeve, got them all kind of ready to go. On this end, I've already got the connector for the intercom. I've got a separate wire connector here that I'm going to use for the radio. And um, we'll wire that in, even though I don't have the radio yet. Then uh, the wires that are coming off the relay for power and ground, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to split this wire up and I'll put one end on this and then the other end on the uh, relay, coming off the relay. And this will be my main power. What this is going to allow me to do then is this is going to be uh, uh, on the inside of the cubby where I'm mounting the radio and intercom. And so anytime I want to remove the radio and intercom, all I got to do is just do a quick unplug and uh, then I can pull the whole thing out. And, and that way I've got it uh, for security reasons. If I want to wash the inside of the car and stuff, I don't have to worry about water or damaging anything. So um, we're going to do that right now. So to do that, we'll just split it in half right now. And we're going to strip these back. Okay, so here is the uh, completed uh, harness. So this end goes to the relay power. And then here's my uh, radio and uh, intercom power. Uh, I've put the uh, sleeving on it and then I've zip tied them all off. I've uh, heated the ends to keep them from fraying. Uh, so this, is, uh, this one is done. So one more piece and then we are just about complete. And so now we're going to complete the switch. Uh, we're going to wire in a, a quarter inch uh, <coughs> blade connector onto uh, the switch that is uh, under the wire that goes to the relay. So with that, just crimp that down. Okay, so uh, the wiring harness is complete. There's essentially kind of three pieces to it. Um, and I made some, a little bit of modification, design modifications to the uh, layout um, just to make it a little bit more suited to what I was looking for. So I've got a pigtail um, that goes to the radio. And I made it a quick connect so I could easily remove the radio from the car if I wanted to wash it or anything like that or if I'm staying in a hotel overnight and I don't want anything to get stolen. Um, I've got the uh, rocker switch that connects up to the battery and then a single wire that goes out to the relay. And then I've got the relay piece. So um, everything's all complete and ready to go. We're going to do some testing here in just a minute. Now before I hook it up to the radio, um, I'm going to go ahead and check the voltages and everything and make sure I'm getting uh, the proper voltages all the way out to uh, the terminal leads. Um, that way, you know, I don't risk damaging the radio if something's wrong, if I'm getting the wrong voltage, if I got a short somewhere or anything like that. So uh, we'll do that first. So we're going to start by getting everything connected up to the uh, battery. And I got my switch working. 
We're going to hook up the terminal leads now. And if I throw the switch, I should be measuring 12 volts on those things. So we're going to grab the voltmeter. 12.4 volts. Exactly what I should be getting. If I check my other terminal lead right here, twelve point three seven volts. So again, exactly what I should be getting. I'm getting twelve volts on both sides. So um, I don't have any shorts or anything like that. I got good continuity. All my solder points are holding up well. Um, so we can uh, hook this up to the radio, and we should get power to the radio. So we're going to flip that off, or excuse me, to the intercom. And we're going to connect, and I'm going to just verify I got negative, negative, and positive, positive. Yep, I do. Okay, and so here goes the final test. We're going to flip that on and we should see this light up. And there we go, we got our light right there. Uh, so everything works as expected. So um, now, you know, some of you may be asking why I went to the tr trouble to make a harness because uh, Rugged does sell a, a harness for the YXZ for, I believe it's about 160 bucks. They actually resell a harness made by XTC. Uh, on the XTC website, it's 149, um, and on the rugged side, I believe it's 160. So, um, you know, to me, I, I thought it'd be one, it'd be a fun project to do um, to make make my own harness, and two, I knew I was going to be able to make it for a fraction of the cost because if I total up the costs, this my switch was eight dollars plus uh, shipping. I think it was four bucks for shipping. Uh, the relay was $10, the um, fuse holders were I think about $8, $9 for all three. The uh, wiring I needed um, probably, let's see, uh, that's six, seven feet plus another, maybe, I mean, need about 10 feet of wiring, so that's about $3 worth of wiring. Um, then I needed uh, another couple of feet of wiring here. Um, that was, you know, I don't know probably uh, two bucks, something like that. Um, not even that. It was probably actually closer to 75 cents or something like that. Um, and then, uh, you know, sh heat shrink tubing, you know, pennies. So, I mean, all total, I got, you know, I think about 50 bucks into materials. That's buying quantity one. If you're buying wholesale, obviously you can get it a lot cheaper. Um, so you know, uh, that's that's you know that's what I chose to do. I you know bought the quick connects. Um, I bought better graded wiring, uh, the sleeve uh, material as well. That was probably another ten bucks. So yeah, probably all total about fifty bucks or so. Uh, maybe maybe a tad more. Um, so you know I saved roughly a hundred dollars in building it myself. So that's why I did it. And like I said, I thought it'd be a fun video to do, a fun project to do. So uh, if you got any questions, you know, post them below. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it helps me know that, it, you know, you guys like this kind of content and you want more of it or not. Um, and, uh, you know, now that the harness is done, next step is to go ahead and do the install. And we'll get started that, uh, you know, probably next weekend. Don't forget, uh, because I bought this new uh, intercom system, I'm giving away my old one. So... Uh, I'm gonna. I'll tell you how to enter to win that uh, the my old intercom system in the at the end of the install video. So um, stay tuned. Next up is the install.